In my wrestling and in my doubts In my failures you won't walk out Your great love will lead me through You are the peace in my troubled sea Whoa, You are the peace in my troubled sea In the silence you won't let go In the questions your truth will hold Your great love will lead me through You are the peace in my troubled sea Whoa, You are the peace in my troubled sea Lighthouse kids, it's so nice to see you again. I hope you're having a great day. Welcome to Lighthouse Kids Church. So have you been watering, misting your little resurrection garden? I hope so. Maybe even by now the grass is growing. We had a lot of fun last week, didn't we? But I think the most important thing for us to remember about last week is that Jesus is alive. He is risen. Isn't that awesome? I sure think so. So today we're going to be learning about David. But before we get into our lesson today, let's bow our heads and pray like we always do. Here we go. Dear Jesus, I thank you so much for the opportunity for us to be together today. I thank you that you love us so much that you died for us and that you rose to save us. Lord, I pray that you would bless us this day and help us to understand and to really think deeply about this lesson, Lord. And now I pray you would listen to our own individual prayers, Lord, as we lift our voices up to you. So this is your turn to pray, Lighthouse Kids. 
go ahead. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Well, let's look back and think about what we've learned about David so far. And I would like to use some things I brought from home to help us remember. So the first thing I want to show you is this. Can you see what this is? Mm, it's a little bag of straw. I dug that out of my garden this morning. And what about this? Can you see what this is? Yeah, it's a, it's a rod. It's not really a staff, it's a rod. And the shepherds used to use these if the sheep were being naughty or to protect them from enemies, they would use this big stick. So can you remember what we learned about David? These are clues, a wooden rod and a little bag of straw. Can you remember? That's right, David was a shepherd boy and he used to take care of his father's sheep and sometimes he would have to protect them against lions and bears and he had something called a slingshot that he would use to do that. It probably didn't look like this, but he would whirl it above his head and release the sling and a rock would go and hit the bear and the bear would leave. Okay, something else we learned about David. Here's your clue. You're going to have to think really hard about this one. Are you ready? Ah, can you remember about the story of David? What that oil means? There was a prophet named Samuel, and he went to a man who was called Jesse, and that man had eight sons, and David was the youngest of those sons. And what happened? Mm -hmm. That's right. Samuel poured oil on David's head. It was a way of anointing him to say that he was God's chosen one to be the next king. He kept being a shepherd boy for quite a while after that. Here's something else we learned about David, and I'm going to give you two clues and see if you can remember. Maybe this one. Yeah, David was a musician. He didn't play a tambourine. Well, maybe he did, but not in the story. And he didn't play a rain stick, but we made rain sticks to remember that he was a musician. And he played for King Saul whenever Saul was being troubled by a bad dream. We're gonna learn something else about David today. And we are going to learn that he was very brave and that he really trusted God. First though, we're gonna talk about a group of people who were called the Philistines. And they were the Israelites' enemies and they were always troubling them and fighting them. And one um, day, actually it went on for 40 days, if you can believe that, but a really big Philistine named Goliath challenged the Israelite army. So Saul was still king at this time. And he was out on the field with his soldiers. And this Philistine named Goliath came and started to trouble the, the soldiers and the army. And he wanted them to pick one soldier to come out and fight against him. And he made a deal. He said, okay, if you win, he's talking to King Saul's soldiers, if you win, we will become your slaves. But if I win, you will become our slaves. And King Saul was really worried about that because he did not want God's people to become slaves again. Well, one day, 
Jesse, remember that's David's father, he said to David, he said, go and take this food to your brothers because they were on the front line. So they were right there in the valley where Goliath was challenging Saul's army. And he took some cheese and he took some bread or some grain to make bread and he took it to his brothers. And when he got there, he was so upset because this really big man named Goliath was challenging God's people, was putting them down, was putting down God and was threatening to make them slaves. Well, there's something David knew, and that's our scripture verse for today. And it is, the battle is the Lord's. And that is from 1 Samuel 17, verse 47, the second part of it, 47b. The battle is the Lord's. And David knew that. But he was also really brave because let me show you how big Goliath was. So, do you know what the name Goliath means? If we just say, whoa, what a Goliath, it means a giant, a really big person. So, I'm going to show you, give you an idea. It says in the Bible that he was about 10 feet tall. That's three meters. Wow, that's pretty big. So, I have a face right here. It's a Goliath face. And I'm going to tape it to the end of this stick. Let me see how I'm going to do this. Try not to knock the oil on the floor. Now, this, this stick is not quite four feet tall. And I'm about five feet. And Goliath was just under 10 feet. So he was even taller than me plus this stick. So let me show you how big that is. Here's my Goliath head. Here it is. Okay, so he was, he was this tall, or even a little bit taller than this. Wow. I would be scared if I thought I was going to have to battle with someone this tall. Isn't that amazing? But David didn't look at Goliath's size. He didn't listen to Goliath's threats. He knew that the battle is the Lord's. Okay, I'm just gonna put Goliath down and sit back down because I'd like to read to you from the children's storybook Bible about David and Goliath. And first of all, I'll show you this picture. Can you see that? That's a picture of Goliath right at the moment when he and David are fighting. David accepted his challenge. So here we go, reading from the children's storybook Bible. Saul and the Israelites were at war with the Philistines. One morning, a man named Goliath marched out of the Philistine army and stood before the Israelites. He was the tallest and strongest man that anyone had ever seen. He was that big. Choose someone from among you to fight me, he bellowed to the Israelites. If he kills me, the Philistines will be your servants. But if I win, you will be our servants. Saul and his army were worried. Who could possibly fight this man and win? David was sent to the Israelites' camp by his father with food for three of his brothers who were in Saul's army. As he arrived, Goliath declared his challenge again. Remember, he did that for 40 days. He went out and made this challenge. And every time he did, no one would come out to fight him. David thought to himself, um, Goliath is not stronger than God, said David. I will fight him. Saul overheard this and said, Goliath is a powerful soldier. What makes you think you could win? I may be young, said David, but with God's help, I have killed lions and bears that have attacked my sheep. God will help me now. 
Refusing both weapons and shield, David, who was already carrying his slingshot, picked up five smooth stones and he walked toward Goliath. Get out of my way, boy, roared Goliath. I don't fight children. This is what David said. You come with a sword and a spear, shouted David back. But I come with God, who is stronger than you and your army. Furious, Goliath strode toward David, who put a stone in his slingshot and hurled it at him. The stone hit Goliath's forehead and sank in, causing the giant to fall. When the Philistines saw Goliath was dead, they fled from the battlefield. They ran away. David won. Isn't that an amazing story? David went to the river bank and he chose five smooth stones. Probably about like this, maybe a little bigger. And he put one of those stones in his slingshot and hit Goliath. But it wasn't David that did it. It was God. It was God working through David because the battle is the Lord's. Well, I have a video to show you now that, that shows the same story again and how it all happened. And after this video, I'm going to play a little true and false game with you. So watch really carefully so that you'll get the answers correct. See you in a minute. Slapstick Theater, David and Goliath. This is David. Hey! David was a shepherd who lived in Bethlehem. David was chosen by God to be the next king of Israel when he was just a boy. But David had to wait a very long time until that promise would come true because there was another king of Israel named Saul. Saul led the armies of Israel. One day, King Saul was with his army near the Valley of Ella. On the other side of this valley, the Philistines, the enemies of Israel, gathered their army ready to fight. The Philistines had a giant warrior named Goliath who challenged the Israelites. Hey! Goliath spoke badly of God and his people. He shouted and taunted them, saying, Choose one man to come down here and fight me. The Israelites and King Saul were very afraid. Meanwhile, David's father sent David to bring some food to his brothers and their captain. Goliath came out of the Philistines' army, and David heard him shout his usual mean taunts to the army of Israel. Whoa, what? As soon as the Israelites saw Goliath, they began to run away in fright. See ya! David asked, Who is this Philistine anyway that he has allowed to defy the armies of the living God? David's questions were reported to King Saul, and the king sent for him. Uh, hi! David said, don't worry about this Philistine, I'll go fight him. Saul said, there's no way you can fight him and win. You're only a boy. Wait. But David told Saul that he had taken care of his father's sheep and rescued them from lions and bears. Then David declared, the Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and bear will rescue me from this Philistine. So Saul said, all right, go ahead and may the Lord be with you. David picked up five smooth stones from a stream. Then, armed only with his shepherd's staff and sling, he started across the valley to fight Goliath. When Goliath saw him coming, he sneered at him and yelled bad things at David. But David said, You come to me with a sword, spear, and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of Heaven's armies. Goliath moved closer to attack, and David quickly ran out to meet him. He hurled a stone from his sling and hit Goliath in the forehead. The stone sank in, and Goliath stumbled and fell to the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with only a sling and a stone, for he had no sword. But he knew the power of God, 
and trusted God to win the battle against the giant. Hello again. I hope you enjoyed that video. I had a lot of fun watching it too. So I am going to make some statements now and you have to decide if they're true or false. False means not true. So if the statement is true, I will hold up a card that says true. And if it's false, I will hold up a card that says false and we'll talk about why it's false. Okay, are you ready? So you can just call the answers out. You don't have to make yourself cards. So here we go, first question, or first statement. David was a shepherd boy when he killed Goliath. Call your answer out, is that true or false? Yeah, true, he was a shepherd boy. Here's the next one. Goliath was a really big, Philistine soldier. Is that true or false? Call it out. Good for you. That one is true as well. Here's the next one. Goliath wanted to fight King Saul. Ah, did I trick you on that one? That's false. He wanted to fight any one of the Israelite soldiers. King Saul was there. He wasn't specifically asking for him. Okay, next one. David was happy to wear the Israelites' armor. That is the right answer. False. It was way too big for him. It was way too heavy, and he wasn't used to it. So even though Saul was wearing an amazing armor, coat of armor, and had a shield and a sword, David went to him as a shepherd boy with a slingshot and five small stones. Next, next one. David killed Goliath with five stones. Hmm, that's a bit of a tricky question. The answer is false. Even though he had five stones, he killed Goliath with just one shot. Next one. David hit Goliath right in the middle of his forehead and the stone sunk in. Good for you, that is true. And in the Bible, it says that Goliath fell right over. Imagine the sound he would have made when he hit the ground. Whew. Uh, okay, last one. David was afraid all the time that he was doing this. a tricky question too. A tricky statement and that is false. David was not afraid because he knew that the battle is the Lord's. Now I imagine there are times when he felt a little bit uneasy and maybe even a little bit afraid like maybe when everyone was telling him, no, you can't do it, he's gonna kill you. You're just a kid, you'll never succeed. Maybe then. He probably felt pretty small too when he took a look at Goliath and how big he was. But he was not afraid because he knew that God would be with him. And he knew that God could do anything. Well, we have a song to sing that talks about being small, but being not afraid because God is big. And we're going to sing that song now. You can jump up and dance around if you like. And right after that song, it's time for our craft. So Liz will be coming up and doing the craft with you today. All right, I hope you enjoy the song. Get ready to boogie. See you later. I am small, I can't do it on my own, no I 
Can't do it on my own. God, you are everything, so I, I can't do anything with you. God, I am not afraid. God, you are everything, so I, I can't do anything with you. God, I am not afraid. I am small. And I can't do it on my own. No, I, I can't do it on my own. God, you are everything, and I, I can't do anything with you. God, I am not afraid. God, you are everything, so I. Hi Lighthouse Kids, so nice to see you again. Wasn't that a great song? I feel like I need to sing that song a lot whenever I just might feel a little scared. With you, God, I am not afraid. With you, God, I am not afraid. And why is that? Because the battle is the Lord's. The Lord is gonna help us with all our battles whenever we feel afraid. 1 Samuel 17, verse 47. So, we talked a lot about a slingshot today because that's what David used with the Lord's help, of course. The Lord used a slingshot that David used to use to ward off the animals that might hurt his sheep, he used it to kill Goliath. And so what we're gonna do we're not gonna make a real slingshot, but we are going to make one out of some popsicle sticks and a pipe cleaner, and I'm gonna show you what it looks like. There we go. There's our slingshot to help us remember that, good job, the battle is the Lord's. I think you have that first memorized, that's wonderful. So all you need for today's craft are three popsicle sticks. Oops, three popsicle sticks. You need a pipe cleaner, scissors, some glue, and some kind of marking materials. And the first thing you do is choose your paper, and it could be it could even be a piece of white computer paper or whatever. I just happen to have some heavier construction paper um, that I'm just going to choose um, a yellow one, I think, and I'm going to set it down. And then the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to glue my first popsicle stick on the paper, kind of right in the middle. So you can see it right in the middle, near the bottom, so we have room to put our Bible verse up at the top later. And here's my glue. Every time I use glue, I'm always a little nervous that it's not going to work. You know how sometimes it gets it gets all dried out. So I have to remember to always close that lid. And you can be pretty generous with the glue. It doesn't matter if it goes over the edge a bit because you want it to really stick onto the paper. Let's see, just turn it around. There we go. With you, God, I am not afraid. That's what I'm doing while I'm waiting for the glue to dry. Singing that, that part of that beautiful song. And then the next part is you take your other two popsicle sticks, and you might need a little bit of help with this part, but you wrap the pipe cleaner around the popsicle stick. And a neat trick to do is just kind of go, you can see I'm kind of wrapping this part around and around and around, and around. So it really is gonna be nice and steady on that popsicle stick. There we go. And then, you see how it's turning into, you see how it kind of looks like the sling part of the slingshot? 
pipe cleaner is flexible. And then I'm gonna take my other pipe cleaner and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna wrap it around and around and then maybe just do some more wrapping. There we go. Now you see on my, on my demonstration slingshot, the pipe cleaner is quite small, but I kind of like it a little bit bigger, don't you? Yeah, so I think we're gonna make it that way. So you can really see that part. You can see where that stone might have just gone in there and, and got Goliath right in the forehead. So now, all we're gonna do is we're gonna take the glue again. I'm just gonna make sure that the popsicle sticks are gonna be well aligned. You have to kind of make them like this, right? Take a look at this popsicle, this slingshot here. See how it's very similar. So we're gonna do that. And again, we need to put some glue on. So, a little bit of glue on there. Well, not a bit of glue, quite a bit. I used to say to my kids when I taught school, a little dab will do ya. A little dab of glue will do you. But in this case, a lot of glue will do you. Because you want to make sure it's going to stay on the page there. Okay. Now remember what we do while we're waiting for the glue to dry. We're going to sing that part of the verse again. Remember how it goes? With you, God, I am not afraid. With you, God, I am not afraid. There we go. Okay, I don't want to lift it up quite yet because I can see that the glue is still not quite dry, but that's okay because you know what we're going to do while we're waiting for it to dry. Oh, I think I'm just going to hold it for a bit longer here. With you, God, I am not afraid. Do, 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 with you, God. Nice singing, Lighthouse Kids. Okay, now, now for the next part, of course, remember how many stones David had? He had five stones, and see how they're all different sizes? So on my sample, I made five different size stones, and this is, but to save a tree, I usually try to use the same piece of paper to do the stones and to also do the Bible verse at the very top. So I'm going to think, how much do I need for the Bible verse? Probably about this much. I'm going to cut this part off. And you know what, Lighthouse Kids, you don't have to write the words on another piece of paper. You could write the words right on the construction paper. It's your, it's your choice. So now I've got this left to make my stones. Now for some of you, you might want to just actually draw the stones so that you know, you know, how big you want them to be. Three, I'll make a little tiny one, then a big, huge one at the end. But you don't need to make circles with the felt marker first. You can just do it freehand. They call it freehand, where you just kind of decide, how do I want my stones to look? And then you just cut them out. Now I saw another craft online where they actually use real stones, but you need a special kind of glue for that, I think, because um, I don't think this this glue will this glue will cut it. I think you'd have to get maybe some tacky glue. There we go. I got my four, and finally, last but not least, is my fifth one. There we go. Put that aside. Now let me see if this is dried yet. Oh, still not looking that dry, but I'll hold it up very carefully so you can see what it looks like so far. And we're just going to add the stones just around the bottom of the, the bottom of the picture here. Now here is where a little dab will do you. You don't need too much. Just a little dab. One, two, uh oh, where's my fifth stone? Oh, it's way over here. How did it get over there? <laughs> I don't think it moved by itself, but I'm kind of thinking it did. I don't remember putting it over there. Three, four, five. It's really important for those five stones because that's what it says in the Bible. And now I'm going to close my 
glue so it doesn't dry out. And now here I'm left with a piece of paper for the top. And so I'm just checking to make sure it's gonna fit. So that's gonna be perfect, isn't it? So I'm just gonna write the Bible verse. And when we say the battle is the Lord, it just makes you feel so strong, right? So strong that we know that the Lord is with us in any battles that we face. Woohoo! That's amazing! Thank you, God. The battle is the Lord's. And we also, we always like to put where this Bible verse is in the Bible. And today we know it's from 1 Samuel and it's chapter 17. And if you want to look at it up later, you can. It's right there. First, chapter 17, verse 47, the last part of verse 47. I know that some when we when we went to church, and we will be going to church again soon, but when we did, we sang a really neat song, a worship song. Um, I can battle. Belongs to the Lord. Yes, the battle belongs to the Lord. Remember that one? Yes. And so you, when next time we sing that song, you could be thinking about the story of David and Goliath and how the battle is the Lord's. And so now I'm just going to. Come on, Lou, cooperate. There it comes. Let's make a big rectangle here. And maybe a cross. There we go. So that'll keep it. So it will stay on. And I'm going to add that to the top. So that is our craft for today, Lighthouse Kids. I hope that you enjoy making it, either by yourself or maybe with an adult that can help you, maybe with a brother or a sister or a friend. So Lighthouse Kids, I hope you enjoyed that craft. Here's the Bible verse for today. The battle is the Lord's. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 47. So, next week, we are going to be learning about another wonderful story about David. So, I know you'll be tuning in for our next lesson. So, bye from Liz. And bye from Teresa. See you next time. In my wrestling and in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence, you won't let go. In the questions, your truth will hold. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled